Oh, good evening, everybody. Uh, it's, I've got two different timings, but I'm assuming it's seven o'clock, so we'll start now. Uh, so I'm starting the license meeting just as before. I am Councillor Collins, Chair of the, this, the Licensing Committee. I'd like to remind everyone present that the meeting's been recorded, with a copy of the recording being published on the Council's website. Item one on the agenda, apologies for absence. I have received apologies from Councillor Maney, Councillor Rigby, Councillor Smell, Councillor Tanding, Councillor Sammons. Uh, do we have any other additionals? Uh, I, do ha I have received a text from uh, Councillor Onalaji and he has confirmed he'll be here coming here, but he's running late, but we'll start without him. Okay. Item two on the agenda, concerns urgent business. I have not been advised of any items of urgent business. Luke, anything? Right, thank you. Item three on the agenda, can I invite members of the committee to declare any interests? Anyone? No, thank you. Okay, item four on the agenda, setting of licensing fees. Can I ask our, our licensing officer, Paul Adams, to introduce this item, please? Thank you, Chair. Um, this item is to set the licensing fees and charges for the 2024-2025 um, period. Um, just briefly taking you through the report, uh, licensing fees are set in various different ways. Some are set as a statutory fee, some are set as a locally set fee but are capped, and others are set as a locally set fee which we can um, set ourselves. Um, Generally, fees and charges, uh, where we can set them ourselves, should be on a cost recovery basis. We're not allowed to make a profit um, from fees and charges or, and use those, that, that profit in other parts of the council. So it should go to ensure that it covers the cost of providing the licensing service. Um, there are lots of things that we can include in those fees and charges, um, but there are some things that we shouldn't include, uh, and that would be things like enforcement against unlicensed activity. Um, what we've tried to do, or what we have done, not tried to do, is in Appendix A, um, uh, we've set out some uh, licensing trading accounts. Obviously, following on from the last meeting, where uh, we have a much larger um, sort of fees calculation spreadsheet, um, <coughs> I've actually reduced that spreadsheet down uh, and split it over to um, two effective sheets. The first page is the fees other, so that's all fees and charges um, that uh, are not taxi related. Um, the second page is fees and charges that are taxi related, so it's all the costs and expenditure in relation to that. And then the third page, page 11 of your report, is just the summary sheet, so that's looking at the brought forward uh, profit or surplus or deficit from previous years, the income, the expenditure and what sort of profit and um, sorry surplus and deficit we're left with at, at the end of the year um, just a little bit of an explanation in relation to the um, sheet on page probably page seven um, it will be the same for, for, for page eight obviously you can see in red there um, that's all of the expense um, associated to the code eh005 is the licensing department code uh, it's all the salary costs etc etc um, the income in black is the income that is obtained in relation to each of those licensing areas. And what we do, um, we split those costs on the left-hand column across each of the individual fee, uh, licensing areas based on the percentage of time that we would spend on, on those activities. Um, so, for instance, Licensing Act 2003, we apportion about 38.5% of the expense against that. If you look at um, page nine, just as, as, as an example, um, there are some expenses um, that um, are only assigned in relation to, uh, sorry, some income that's only, you know, it's, it's assigned to each of the income areas. So for private hire vehicles, obviously only appears in the private hire vehicle column. So you can see where the income and expenditure is across all of the, the, the spreadsheets. Um, as I say, if you look at page 11, um, which is the summary sheet, it does show that um, we are running as a deficit uh, in relation to most of the hackney carriage and private hire um, fees and charges. Um, 
However, most of those are, it's a reducing deficit already. Um, with the licence fees, our income does vary year on year, uh, and we are sort of relatively reluctant to try and change our fees every year because some licences, like a private hire driver's licence, can be a three-year licence, a private hire operator is a five-year licence. So these people are only renewing every three years or every five years. So the income isn't a, a sort of a linear, steady income every year. We don't have 200 licences renew every year. Some renew every year, some renew every three years. So we generally try to sort of review the fees and charges or, or, or reset them, especially around the taxi bit, sort of every three years. All of the fees and charges were, were, were set last year and increased last year, including the taxi fees. When we move across to things like the Licensing Act 2003, it does show a large deficit on the account. These are just trading accounts. It's not actual sort of money in, in, in the bank as such. But that just demonstrates that that's a statutory set fee. Um, we can't do anything to change that fee. However, it is costing the authority more than, it, than, than we're getting in to actually provide that, that service. Government have suggested that they will allow at some point um, uh, us to set locally set fees for Licensing Act 2003 and should we get that ability because we sort of run as a, as a deficit will allow us to increase fees and charges. Those fees and charges haven't increased since the introduction of the legislation back in 2005 anyway. So, you know, the, 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 it's quite some years since there's been any, any change to that fee structure. Um, the same is with the gambling. Again, we are at the maximum cap. We can't charge any more than we're charging. We're charging a maximum amount. Animal licensing, um, the proposal in the report is to increase the fees. Um, the same is for scrap metal and the same is for MST, which is uh, massage and special treatment. Um, and the, the, the same is said for, for, for street trading. Pages 13 through to 29 and 31 are the fees and charges um, for each of the, the, the different areas. Shows what the charge is for this year, what the ch proposed charge is for next year, and um, what is the, the, the percentage increase. It does say in each column against each of the fees of a discretionary D or statutory S. So it, it, it obviously shows whether we can or cannot change those fees. Um, benchmarking of fees um, is a very difficult one. Um, we are, have included some benchmarking just so you can get a, an idea of where we sit against other um, local Essex authorities. Um, certainly the guidance around fee setting against all, across all the legislation says you shouldn't set your fees based on benchmarking. Um, you know, the cost of providing a service can be very different just because, you know, um, one authority charges £100 for something and we charge £200 for something. As long as we're cost recovery, that's okay. We don't know how many licences are issued for that £100 that another local authority might be charging. We don't know how much it costs to provide their service. Even if the cost of service provision was the same, if they've got a lot more licences than we have, the cost is spread over a much, much greater number. So their, their, their charges would generally be lower. I think that's probably all I need to say. I'm sure we've got some questions um, possibly on this, but if there are any questions, I'm happy to, to answer those. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Paul. Uh, much appreciated. Uh, first, first of all, I understand uh, Councillor Kent wishes to ask a couple of questions. Thank you, Chair. Um, Well, can you, sorry, I was just couldn't read my writing there. I've just read it now. Um, so which of these do we have discretion over and which ones are set for us, roughly? Is there... So the, the, the taxi and private hire ones, we have the full discretion over. Licence Act 2003, Gambling Act 2005, Taxi, Oh, sorry, I'll start again. So the, the, the taxi and private hire ones mm. are... Discretion, we've got complete discretion over the setting of those. Licensing Act, Gambling Act fees are statutory set. Um, the sex establishment, animal establishment, scrap, MST and street trade, and again, we can, can set those. We've got full discretion over those. So really, it's just the Licensing Act and Gambling Act fees that we have no real discretion over. Another question, Councillor Kent? Uh, if that's okay, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Um... So, 
the ones that are um, statutory, are we making full cost recovery on them? How do we, if we're costing us more, surely that must be nationally if there's a set, if it's set by government. So how are we ensuring that we're able to sort of recover the costs? I mean, quite frankly, you know, we can't recover the full costs on things like the Licensing Act 2003 um, applications. As an example, a temporary event notice is £21. Um, we had a hearing the other week for uh, where we had representation against a temporary event notice. You know, the application coming in and processing costs us more than £21 in, in officer time and the resources to, to be able to process it. If you then add in things like having to have a hearing, et cetera, et cetera, you know, £21 doesn't cover the cost of that. Um, we are reliant there on government changing the legislation to allow the fees to be set locally. I know the local government association and others have been, you know, trying to put pressure on for, for that to happen. There has been an indication, but it's been an indication for a number of years. I think I've come to every committee for the last probably four or five years saying exactly that. But yeah, I mean, it, it would rely on, on government to allow us to, to, to charge different fees or for them to increase the amount of fees. But there is national pressure um, for that to happen. Sorry, Chair, could I have one more? Is that okay? Thank you. Thank you. Last one is on the um, report at the beginning. Obviously, you've got some counts are showing a surplus, and but this, uh, but the report also says that you can't make a profit. So I'm not. I wonder if you could explain how, if we can't make a profit, some accounts do show a surplus, and how. So, okay. with sort of the surplus and, and deficit, we are able to roll that surplus and deficit forward. So when you look at the summary sheet, we have previously had a deficit on some of those accounts, hence why last year we, we increased fees across the board. So albeit we're making a surplus, all we're, do, all we're doing is reducing that deficit. Where we get to the point where we're in a surplus and we're making a surplus, we'll have to then make a decision as to whether we want to reduce the fees or it is likely by that time costs will naturally increase. So um, it may be that it, it balances itself out. But by reviewing the fees annually, um, you know, as, we, as we do, we can keep an eye on that. And as I say, because we are making, uh, making there is a small surplus on, on each of the taxi accounts predominantly, um, that's why we're not proposing to increase the fees because it is reducing the deficit that is there. Councillor Kent. Councillor Green, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, would you just be able to confirm, first of all, when these charges set? It says 1st of April 2023 in the report. Um, these are, well, the, the proposed ones are for the 1st of April 2024. Um, apologies if I've, I've left 2023 in there somewhere, but I'm not quite sure where in the report it says that. But Page three. three. can see it says they were last increased in 2020. 3.3 under the charges will come into effect. From Sorry, uh, yeah, apologies. Um, yeah, 1st of April 2024. Thank you. Um, just to continue, um, I c in the report, it's clear we're running at a deficit all across by quite a, a man. Have you looked at other authorities to see what they're doing to entice more license holders into the borough to clear that? Um, I mean, I think you've got, I mean, it's difficult because, I mean, obviously alcohol and entertainment licenses, um, it's reliant on you know, companies and businesses looking to invest in, in, you know, providing bars, restaurants um, and bits and pieces within the borough. So it's very difficult from a licensing perspective to, um, uh, you know, generate additional, you know, uh, capacity for, for, for people to have licenses and I think that would link into sort of the, the much wider sort of you know economic growth of, of, you know, of the borough effectively. Um, things like you know your, your taxi licensing uh, the other thing that has impacted the fees is, is nationally there has been a reduction in taxi licenses that, 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 that people have applied for especially off the back of Covid a lot of, of, of taxi drivers gave up in, in during Covid they've sought alternative employment and they've remained in that alternative employment. I think 
we, and we had a taxi trade the other week, and I think um, where we meet with the trade and we consult with the trade and, and talk about issues that are affecting the trade, and I think it, it's not really the cost of the licence that is the prohibitive factor, it's the ease of access to a licence. We do see local authorities around the country, and I use Wolverhampton as an example, where they have no knowledge test or any real um, standards that, that, that would, you know, um, as we've got at Thurrock, ensure that, you know, the, the, the safety and quality of, uh, of the drivers. I'm not saying that, that Wolverhampton is, is, is unsafe, et cetera, but their standards are, are much lower. They don't have a knowledge test, for instance, uh, as an entry requirement. So drivers do migrate to Wolverhampton and get licensed in, in Wolverhampton. We could look at removing a lot of our um, policy and conditions and, and sort of almost making it a free-for-all, but I think that would lower the standard. Um, and I think, you know, we, we've done our best to try and, you know, raise ourselves or, or maintain what is a national minimum standard. And I think to, to do that, you know, yes, you might get more income on one hand, but, um, you know, you, you, you're running the risk of not protecting the public, which is initially what, you know, what, what we're there to do. That's fine. Thank you, Chair. Finished? Oh, thank you. Sorry. I'm a bit deaf. I'm, so I'm finding it difficult to hear. Uh, Councillor Hart, staying, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, just on page nine, I've just got a couple of questions on that, and I might have some in a minute. Um, I, it might be the way the cost centre is set up, but is CRB the DBS? Yes, it is. It used to be CRB. It's just the label on the, the, the cost centre has never changed. Yeah, thanks. Could, it, and again, it might be the way the columns are, but... Could you just tell us where that figure, obviously, because eight, eight, nearly eight and a half thousand is quite a lot, and I've noticed that one's under private hire and the, the other 50% is under Hackney Driver. What, what does that mean, please? Just checking, I'm looking at the right, the right column. So, yeah, that is the expense, and, and I mean, they're, they're the DBS checks for the drivers. Um, we issue a Hackney Carriage driver's licence and a private hire driver's licence. So that's a split of that recharge based on um, the percentage of time that we spend against that. Sorry, I was gonna, sorry. Yeah, I was just going to say, does that mean we, the local authority pays for it then? Or is it recouped? It, it does, but we, we do charge the driver for it. So although it's an expense, there is an, it is part of the income uh, for, for the licence fee. So. Would you like to ask another question, Captain? Yes, Councillor? that's okay. Thank you. Um, sorry, and I'm not very good with some of the acronyms. Could you just tell me what BCC income is and PP management, please? Thank you. Okay, so um, we've uh, currently got, uh, we do some shared um, licensing management of the Brentwood Borough Council um, licensing team. So I, I, I manage the team ac across there as well. So that's the, the, the the recharge uh, in relation to that and the PP management that's public protection management so that takes all my managers and, and line managers etc in, into account. Thank you Councillor Hartstein. Council Onanaji. Thank you Chair and thank you uh, Paul as well. Uh, my question was um, I was going to ask um, what we could do to reduce the, de the, the deficits in in, in the spreadsheet on page 11, looking at the spreadsheet there, only two items are in surplus. The rest of them are in deficit. I do know you said not too many people are renewing their licenses quite well. Is there any kind of incentive or anything we could do to uh, get this uh, out of these deficits? I think, um, obviously, one of the things we can do is to increase the fees that we charge, and that is part of the, the, the proposal tonight. I think generally there's a, about a 6% increase where we, we feel it's appropriate. Um, you know, other than, um, you know, changing what we do, um, it's very difficult to incentivise people to come and, and, and licence with us. It's a service that if they've got a business here, they choose to come to us to, to do. It's something we can really sell... Um, we can't license people in, in, in other areas. Um, we can only license the people with, with, within Thurrock. So other than increase the fees and charges and, and, you know, ensure that we are running, you know, as an efficient, a cost-efficient service as we can, which I, you know, I can assure you we are, uh, you know, that, that's all we can do. Uh, you know, with the increase, hopefully that, that, you know, it will see a change in, 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 in surplus and, and deficit. 
it's not an exact science this you know next year i could have double the amount of people come and apply for a taxi license i could have half the amount of people that come and apply for a taxi license so you know we can guesstimate that sort of um those sort of figures but you know it is a guesstimate we can't do any more than that Councillor Nanaji, another question? Oh, thank you very much, that's all. Thank you. Do we have any other questions from anybody? Councillor Raver? Thank you, Chair. Um, just a couple of questions. Following on from something Councillor Hartstein's just said, is it might be useful for future things to have a glossary or key or something so we know what those acronyms mean. Um, I notice most of them appear to be discretionary things rather than statutory. Is there a, um, quite a large implication for costs or man hours or whatever if changes are made to them? Is that a, a sort of contributing factor to the fact that very few of them have changed? I mean, to if, if fees and charges have, have changed, um, I mean, the, the, the work involved in relation to that is that, um, you know, we change the, the information on the website and update all of our forms where people apply online. Um, things like the Licensing Act uh, 2003 fees, we send out invoices, but that's not impacted by that. So there wouldn't be a lot of... Sorry to interrupt your problem. Councillor Raper, could you shut your cup? Oh, oh sorry. Up, sorry. Yeah, so there wouldn't be a lot of, of work created by the uplift of fees. Obviously, we would write out to everybody to notify them, but that's very easy to do with our licensing database. It you know, shouldn't take any more than about an hour to do that. So. Thank you. May I have a second question? Or Several. Carry on, Councillor Raper. <laughs> on page 22, um, oh no, hang on, 23, third box, box down, or second one, gaming machine, gaming machine permit is £15. Is that per machine or is that per establishment? Um, what is that? Family Centre Gaming Machine. So that's per permit, so they can have a number of machines on that. That one is one of the gambling activities that are a statutory set but it is yeah. for the permit so they, they submit the permit they have one for each machine no just one permit and they name the number of, of, of machines on that any more questions councillor raber i think that that's fine thank you thank you councillor chukwu oh th thanks chair um in comparison because i'm just looking at the um the benchmarking, right? So just looking at page 33. In comparison with what the Thorac is char charging and um, some other local authorities, and you can actually you can actually see that what we are charging is not bad. If you compare, is Brentwood is a little bit higher than us. If you now decide to increase the fees again, do you think it's going to be affordable for the people of? Um, Thorough to pay. Thanks. I'm sure um, you know nobody's going to welcome any sort of increase to any sort of fee. Um, I think you know the, the, when you look at the breakdown of these fees and some of these fees, you know, the licenses for three years. If you actually break down the cost of a taxi license over sorry, a taxi driver's license over three years, it is a minimal amount that that, that, that we're raising the amount per week per day you know per month whatever i don't think any of these fees are cost prohibitive and i don't think any of these fee increases will see um, business being forced to close as, as a result of that as i say you know it is an increase in cost that nobody would welcome however um you know everybody's costs are going up and we need to ensure that the the fees are you know cost recoverable to, to cover the cost of the, of the service provision Councillor Chuck, would you have another question? Just a follow-up question. In regards of um, the cost of living, the inflation, and the, a lot of things that has not gone well, if you're going to carry out, if you're going to increase the fees, do you intend to consult? Do you intend to um, let them know what you're about to do? Thank you. So we, we haven't consulted on the proposed fee increase. What I have committed to in the report is that if it is approved you know, this evening, we will write to them as soon as it's approved to say from the 1st of, of April, the fees and charges will be rising to that. So they have a few months to, to, to be aware of, of, of the change in fees and, uh, and charges. Um, 
I don't think it's deemed that any of the sort of increases at a significant level that it's required, um, we need to, to, to consult on that. There are some fees that we are statutorily required to, to, to consult on. They are the taxi fees and we're not increasing those. So um, as I said, there's no proposals to consult beforehand, but we will notify them at the earliest opportunity if the fees and charges are agreed. No more questions, Councillor Jibber? Uh, so Councillor Green is... Thank you, Chair. I'm looking on page 11. Oh, sorry. Councillor Green, sorry. Thank you, Chair. Um, in the um, um, page 33, we've got private hires and all the driving licences. Um, following up from Councillor Hartstein's question about the DBS, is there any room to actually recover some of our um, expenditure back on those fees? Um, yes, I mean, the, 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 the fee, the actual fee there, um, I'm just having a little look. Right, yeah, so the, although it says excludes DBS, that's just the benchmarking. Um, in the actual fees and charges sheet, there is a charge that we, we have for the DBS. Um, the reason we separate the fees and charges out is that if, for instance, for a driver, if we refuse an application, we should return the application fee, but we keep the DBS element. By separating them out, it's very clear as to what they're paying for what. Um, so if we refuse an application, we refund the application fee because it is an application, uh, sorry, it's a grant fee, not an application fee. Um, yeah, so we do charge for the DBS and the other bits and pieces separately. Um, albeit it's not in the benchmarking because the DBS is pretty much the DBS cost, which is what we pay for, for the DBS. Have you another question, Councillor Green? Okay. Um, then how have we got an expenditure on a deficit on the DBS on the report? Um, yeah, no, 99% of the DBS checks that we undertake, um, there is no, we, we get the, the, the money back in on. There will be the odd occasion where there's an administrative error or there's a problem we want to, to, to request another check for some other reason, so we may pay for one or two checks throughout the year, but I say 99% of it, we do get that back. Um, but if we've got a, a real reason to do so, in addition to the, what is the norm, it, you know, we may pay out once or twice a year for, for a DBS check, but it's only 60 pound or something like that, so. Thank you, Councillor Green. Uh, Councillor Lydiard. Thanks, Chair. Uh, looking at page 11, I see there's a summary of accounts for 2022-23. Uh, um, when, when did we last raise the uh, charges across the board? So most charges were raised last year uh, in 2023. Um, That's when, when the increase was last year. Right, so um, was it a straightforward increase across the board or, you know, because we haven't actually had the final figures for 23, 24 yet, have we? Or well, we wouldn't have done. No, so the, um, these, everything is based a year, year behind, so we haven't closed the accounts yet for this financial year. So next year's fee setting, we'll consider this year's uh, financial account. So if there's been a sudden uplift in everything this year and we, you know, there's more income against expenditure, you know, we might be having a consideration, do we want to, to lower fees? Um, I, you know, I'm fairly confident now without you knowing the end of the year, we'll probably be, you know, staying the same or looking to increase things a little bit again next year. But right, so it's just a year behind it's and a year behind it's because, unlikely yeah, to make any difference out, whatsoever. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Chair. Thank you. Any more questions? Uh, Councillor Green? No. no. Okay then, so we just go to the recommendation to agree. I'll put it up from here. To, uh, well, to agree the proposed fees and charges as set out in the appendix for the year 2024-25 financial year. Are we in favour? No. Okay, that's agreed. And that concludes our business for this evening and probably for the rest of this year. So I wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year for those who keep it. And uh, hopefully see you all in the new year. And I'm closing now. Let's see what time I've got on mine.
We could do with the clock in here at 7.31. Thank you very much indeed. Good evening, everyone.